welcome back to Dishin' with the Delco Duo. Nice. Who knows if you're watching in the morning. This could be midnight that you're listening. It could be midnight for <laughs> us right now. It's 10.30 in the yeah. morning. Uh, happy Thursday. Episode happy Thursday. 6. Episode 6. And we are loving Dishin' with the Delco Duo, but I am just exhausted. Exhausted. This is this from might life from this these conversations. These, this might be my hardest episode yet, and we're only at episode six. But no, I moved this weekend, and I am still feeling the impacts. And you're just done. I'm done. Ready for the week to be over. Yeah, I'm. Ready and it was for a long Friday. week. Your movers canceled on you. Yeah, it was. It was. You crazy. had to change your days around. Mm -hmm. But the concern here with this big move that Monica has been talking about on social media, as well as we talked about it a bit on the morning show. Are you still in Delaware County? A lot of people are worried that Monica is no longer in Delaware County. Could so, you, could you imagine if I moved to like Montgomery County or Philly? I would have to replace you. <laughs> it would be addition with the Delco Uno because we would have to. Monica would have to have her own Montgomery County show. You could replace me, have a Delco duo with anyone at our station because <laughs> anyone at our work is also from Delco. You would have no problem. Finding a replacement. You're irreplaceable, Monica. No, I am I am still in Delco. If anything, I am more Delco. And we have talked about this, that there's like more Delco parts of Delaware County. So I had been in Ardmore for four years. The Delco side. The very Delco important side. because yes. there's different sides. That's like right on the line. Like yes. Monica was right, could be. Yeah. But still, yeah, still on the Delaware County side. Now I'm moving to media which if you are not familiar, media is called media for a reason. It's the middle of the county. Everyone's and it's hometown. Everybody's hometown, and it's got the courthouse. And not for nothing, Monica now lives much closer to me, and I've been trying to have us carpool, mm -hmm. but you yeah. don't sound like you're too keen on carpooling with me. Yes, I think at when we drive in at 3 in the morning. Like, you don't want to talk to me I at 3? I don't want to talk. You talk to me at 3.30 when I get in. <laughs> because I'm awake at that moment. My drive-in. You just want to listen to your NPR. NPR <laughs> and your boring histories. The other day I come in and Monica's like, I have to tell you, I listened to the most interesting thing on my way in. It wasn't Dishing with the Delco Duo. Yeah. It was on the history of 80s songs or 80s songs that were she was samples fascinated, fascinated by 80s it. 80s songs sampling songs from the 70s and basically stealing these people's um vocals that it was crazy that would make me fall asleep on my way in i need to listen to music i need it to be pumping me up another no. day and i think and then i learned the history of the census this morning it was riveting and this this is what you listen to yes. when you drive in. This is what keeps you awake. BBC on the on NPR. <laughs> I would be snoozing down Township Line Road, making my way towards West Philadelphia. Uh, but yeah, so you've been moving, and yeah. a lot of things have been happening. And as well, wait, I got it. So the move. What was crazy about it is that the movers called an hour before they were supposed to show up, Saturday. You know, we had done a lot of work, like a lot of work it's leading a lot up of prep. to Yeah. And then um, Friday night, I was getting, you know, when you're, you can do as much prep as you want, but when the day comes, you're just like, I am so stressed. It still doesn't go And the way overwhelmed. That you yes. Yeah. Um, so Saturday morning, wake up and I'm starting to get, I, like, I didn't sleep well that night mm -hmm. and I'm starting to get so nervous. And then we get the call from the movers that said, you know, um, we can't, we don't have a driver. We need to reschedule you for Sunday. We had, I don't want to call her a babysitter, but my um, my brother's wife was coming over to take care of Joe while we were doing this. Everything was lined up. Yeah, everything. And then all of a sudden we had to put a screeching halt to it. It ended up really working out very well because again, I felt so overwhelmed that I was able to take a step back, take a breather, get a lot of the stuff done I wanted to before the movers got there. But yeah. still it was, my whole body hurts moving four months pregnant. I, I was going to say, not to mention that you're pregnant. Like that, that is just, a, you don't even have to move to be exhausted from that. <laughs> so it's, it's like, I want to, you know, when you want to keep going, you're like, oh, I really need to unload this or I need to yeah. do that. You but it was, I physically you said added. You listen to your body. Your body said no. And yes. that's what I do every day before, I, if I want to exercise, mm -hmm. my body says no. And I listen to it. How many times a day does your body tell you no? <laughs> every day, every time I'm every thinking second. about putting my sneakers on, I'm like, <laughs> my body tells me no. And I have to listen to it <laughs> that's I don't, I don't make the rules nope I'm still a Delco resident if anything thank goodness because again I would have to replace you yeah 
I would never do that. No. I, I'm Ever. still Delco at heart no matter what. But so you've been with your parents a lot as you've been, they've been helping you move. Ooh. And your dad was kind enough yeah. to pick up something for us. So he, explain he got... what we have and what you wanted. Because <laughs> this is not what you this wanted. This is not what I asked my dad. Uh, so he goes, uh, hey, girlfriend. That's how he answers the phone. Uh, I'm got. I'm gonna go pick up more fruit for the house. Do you want anything? I was like, yeah, tasty cake. Fruit and tasty <laughs> cake. Very similar. So he did the best he could, and he got a mix of fruit and tasty cake. This is a um, baked pie. They're pies. That's not what I wanted. I wanted like a crimpet. But no, you cupcake. wanted you wanted the peach cobbler uh, donuts that are new. Yes, seasonal. So I thought, oh, let's give a seasonal try because. Every time we talk tasty cake, I'm always straight up crimpets. You're always original yeah, candy cakes. Candy cakes. And we just go with the original, like the real good yeah. um, sugary stuff. And I said, Dad, oh, let's try the seasonal stuff. Can you bring this home? And he and brings home, he home these pies. Like, I'm sorry. There's no, are we 80 years old? <laughs> this no is what 80 year olds eat. Purpose to this? We just wanted to try the new ones. So now we got to expand our then. horizons. Oh, oh wow, Jenna's eating with a hard. fork. I don't know if I'm going to like this, honestly. I, I think you're just, well, you just got a crust right there. Mm -hmm. You got to get just, some. Okay. I'm going to break this in the middle. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know, guys. I kind of just want to crimp it right now. Oh, I don't spilled. like peach, so I definitely wouldn't like what you have, but I do like apple. I'm so surprised. Wait, you don't like peach? That's no, the best fruit there is. I do not like peach. Peach things. Like, I like a peach, mm -hmm. but peach things, hmm. it's weird. This is actually really good. Okay. Okay. Tasty Cake, for those not familiar, it is a Philly-based company. Everyone listening is familiar with Tasty Cake. Come you, on. Listen, we might have viewers Virginia from... Virginia listeners. We are... Our show is worldwide. Okay. <laughs> Virginia has Tasty Cakes. Virginia does? No. I feel like they travel. Well, had, someone... People in Virginia have had, had a Tasty Cake before. No, they're like straight-up Entenmann's. They're like, why would you... I don't... I, I don't if you're one of our Virginia listeners, because we know you're out there... Right to us, please. <laughs> I don't know. Virginia, that's it. It's, if it's, you're wondering how we know that, it's because we're on Spotify and we can see the location of people downloading us. Yeah. And it has been Virginia, so. Yeah, that um, weird Virginians. that weird Virginia town that sounds like a curse word, <laughs> so I'm not even going to say it. It's spelled I know Nor what it is. It's, it's, it sounds like Norfolk, but it's it, it's the other bad. It's why the, do they the do that? Adverb. Why do they do that? Do they just think it's funny to make us all curse? I, I I could not tell you. I think that it was made well beyond people using the F word. Uh, are you sure? Well, I we, think they all. We, I we think, need to go back to the origins of the F word, and I don't I don't know when that started. Uh, you don't know the origin of the F word? No. Oh, there, there's an origin. It's the king. It was sanction. Uh, I think, I believe this is it. The word, no, he listen. Anything you're about to say. Consenting from the king, it was when you could, the king would tell people that they could have yes. SEX with one another. Okay. <laughs> Why did we go down and this path? I think it was fornicating under consent of the king. Oh, mm -hmm. that is so interesting. Mm-hmm. And that's where that word came from. It was actually like a legit word. I wow. I am not a historian. I, I might Did be... you learn this on one of your car rides in? <laughs> did you, did you listen to this on your way in and now this is what you learned? I, I'm going to go Google that now because that was one of those things I learned in like middle school and it, I always kept with me. I you never learned went, that in middle school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, middle school, the people talk about the weirdest things. And now that I'm thinking about it, it could be totally false. I had just always thought that's what that word meant. Okay, well, we have our phones, but we can look that up later Fornicating on. Fornicating under consent of the king. We'll just go with that for now. All right. Well, this has really gone off the rails. We're nine minutes in, and we're talking about the king's consent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to our issues this week. Thank you, as always, for submitting them. Yep. Uh, we got a lot of significant other problems this week, which I feel like is dominant. You're, you always got a problem with your wife, your girlfriend. I mean, you spend the most time with them. I don't think it's reflective of anybody's relationship to submit a problem. It just means you're a normal couple that's having an issue. Yeah. And God knows, I every week, I, I turn to Jenna. I'm like, Jenna, do you have a problem that you would like to talk about? And you're like, eh. And I'm like, because I do. So, so if you don't have anything, we'll just talk about my issue. I just block them out after they happen. I'm like, I'm never going to think about that again. All right, Yari from Yaden. My girlfriend burps, part one. This is a two-part it. 
problem mm-hmm. and does not like Star Wars. <laughs> Yari, Yari from Yaden. Yari? I think you need to get over the burping. Everybody burps and it feels good. Just ask Jenna. <laughs> yes, about 10 minutes before we actually came on, I forgot that I was at work and I just let out a huge burp. And it felt, I think I lost 10 pounds. And I Monica felt was good shocked. for her. I was, I was quite shocked. And then, I, and then I said to her, I was like, that sounded like it felt good. It did feel good. It was one that, you know, came from, came from the soul. Yeah. I don't have an issue with, I mean, if you're burping every five seconds and you're really aggressive about it and loud or in my face, that's when it's a problem. But if you're burping, you're that's your body. You're doing it. Yeah. And, and you're probably feeling really good right after that. So, right. and are you burping Yari? Like what's the double standard here? <laughs> are you, if your girlfriend bur- is not allowed to burp, then you're not allowed to burp either. Do they smell? That is the question. That's where, <laughs> that's where I draw the line. I don't get close enough yep. to smell them, but I will say like if we're at the dinner table and Tate oh, burps, no. that drives me crazy. Oh yeah. No, you're not allowed to do that at the dinner table. You, that's not allowed. Or if he does like no cursing, no cursing and no burping, burping. What's that? What's that saying? No cursing, no burping, no, I forget. I don't know. No cussing, no something. I don't know what saying you're trying to say, but Tate will do this thing where one burp comes out and it's like when you sneeze, you know, when when Monica sneezes, you know, there's one in the chamber, five more that follow all of them. Very aggressive. Like, Chill. So we'll hear them on the air. She'll do them on the air. I have to release. So I don't, when I, when I sneeze, I'm not holding back because if I hold back, then I feel like they're still left. There's still some. Oh, well, they're always left because they're consecutive. Yeah. So your sneezes so are kind of oh. like how Tate will burp. Uh-oh. So that bothers me. So Yari, if your girlfriend is like burp, 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 that's wow. a problem. If this is like a burp every once in a while. I also hate burp. the word burp <laughs> i just said it so much that it so started much. sounding That's weird just was like <laughs> burp. <laughs> burp, burp, burp. okay and then the part that she does not like star wars star wars is not for everyone i've never seen it nor do i like it because of how much people talk about it and how much we talk about it we do talk like, about it's, it a lot i'm sure show. it's great i'm sure it's amazing it it's really fun combination especially the the originals like they were, there was fun. There was funny, some comedic timing in it all. Uh, action, a little bit of romance, but I'm not into like a ton of romance in a movie. So you know, a quick kiss here and there is that great. Surprises me because everything else in your life revolves around romance. romance. I like romance for romance. I don't like it okay. in an the action rom-com. movie. You don't want like you don't want Star Wars to be having romance. Yeah, I don't want it to overtake the storyline, and it certainly in Star Wars does not overtake the the storyline. Even the Rey and Kylo Ren. Um, storyline talking a different language to me. I I've never seen it. I love their love, and and I don't think it overtook the story. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I some people might disagree with me. So do you think that Yari's girlfriend does not like it because she she's into the romance and she's into the rom com, or she doesn't like it because you're allowed not to like a movie? Yari. Yari Yari seems to really like Star Wars, and Yari, you have to understand, it's not for everyone, and it doesn't speak volumes that that they don't like, like Star Wars. Die hard Star Wars fans though want die hard Star Wars fans in their lives. So maybe this is not the right relationship for you. Oh, you gotta find someone who likes Star Wars. That will go to like Comic Con with you. Oh yeah, but I don't know much about Yari. So I don't know I mean that, I that's his jam or what. I really like Star Wars. Eugene does placate me and will go to the movie theaters with me. But that's it. He's he's not really into it otherwise. Um so you don't you don't all have to have the same interests. You know, you can have some differing ones. Yeah. But it sounds like if this is a problem in the relationship, then it's a big deal. Yari, it's okay. Star Wars isn't for everyone. Okay, next topic, Allie from Alden. My fiance never makes the bed or puts away laundry. Ay, ay, ay. We've had a, we have a lot of two-part problems today. Like, I feel like these are two <clears> separate <throat> problems. Mm-hmm. But they come back to, like, neatness and cleanliness, I guess. Right. So they, they have a common theme. Um, it takes time. To train. To train. <laughs> it's, it's horrible to say. 
And it's not, it's it, maybe training is the wrong word, but just to preference yeah. what you like. Everyone likes their bed made though. So that's why I don't. Not everybody it. cares enough. Hmm. So um, I make my bed every day that I can. Well, that's what I was going to say. For us, we're not going to make the bed with. No, with someone sleeping in <laughs> yeah. it. So, so in that case, and then Eugene does not make the bed. He does not. No, he does Tate make the bed? Yes, he does. He puts the pillows up. I have all these Is decorative pillows. Is that because you told him or he did that before you guys oh, started dating? No, we. he would never make the bed. His uh. room was an absolute mess when I met him. Borderline wow. horrified when I saw his How? clothes everywhere. Um, but now he makes the bed every morning. He puts all the decorative pillows on it. So tell us your ways, Jenna. How? I just How? told him to make the bed. You just told him? I said, make the bed. You have a better day. I'm going to text you Eugene right now. We're changing our lifestyle, you Eugene. Have, you have a better day when you make your bed. Uh, don't. So I want him to have a great day, so I want him to make the bed. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. So this has nothing to do with no, you. It has, it's, it's everything to do with he, he just needs to have a good day, so he needs to make the bed. <laughs> Tate needs to have a good day. <laughs> I will make you. I have cannot believe it. you've never asked Eugene to make the bed. You no, I haven't. Care? I I like really don't care all that much. When you get home, the bed will be unmade right now. It'll be unmade. Yes, and then and then no. I will make it or no. just let it go. On the weekends, our bed is made because I make, I make it, it on the weekends. I make it on the weekends. I give Tate the weekend off because he's made it all week long. I do think though there's a little part of of also leading by example. If you make the bed every day and then all of a sudden one day you don't make the bed, I think you'd be surprised all of a sudden that person will comment and say, oh, you didn't make the bed. And they like it. They like that feeling that you did that. And so then they might be more inclined to do it themselves. I've noticed on the weekend, sometimes Eugene, when he gets up, will make the bed. Because again, it really is a great way to start your day. I absolutely love it. I just think, you know, in the morning when you're rushing to get to work, well, that's, that's like the last say. thing on Eugene your mind. Eugene also has to get Joe ready. Yes. So that could change things, like when children are in the mix. But right. I, Tate's still making the bed. <laughs> I can't go home and have the bed on me. That would that would drive me nuts. Yeah, you. I, I definitely could see that. does lack in is putting away the laundry. What does that mean, put it, putting so he, away when you fold it? So he'll do laundry all day long, fold it. He hates putting it back into the closet, putting it back into the drawers. And he claims that since he does his laundry most of the time, like if I do it or yeah. he does it because he needs something and I wasn't going to do laundry that day, he claims that I'm sleeping for he our work schedule, so he doesn't want to make noise around the room, which makes sense. But right. then it sits there for like four days in his laundry basket, and then his dirty laundry is just piling next to it because he hasn't put it away. Oh, no. So that that is something that yeah. I can totally agree with you, Allie. And you know what? I'm not putting it away. No. I don't want to put your laundry away. No, but but it is really essential to put the laundry away. I have seen memes all over, and it's like, you know, um, f takes me 15 minutes to fold laundry, and it takes me all week to actually put it away. I that I don't get. I will sometimes fold my laundry at night uh -huh. and then just be so tired that then I'll just leave it until the next morning. But the next morning, it's it's put away. Yeah. Because I, I got to use that basket. I do it right away. Wash, fold, put it away. But then again, our schedule is different. We're home during the day. So, you know, we have more time to do that. I can understand why, you know, I don't know if this person, you know, they work a nine to five or what kind of job they work. But yeah. at the end of the day, you're tired, but don't let it sit there. No, it's, it's don't let it sit there. It feels so good to put it away and have a fresh hand. Why is that the most annoying part? Like, why is it so annoying to put your laundry I away? Don't, I don't understand. I don't know why people don't put their I'm, laundry I'm away. I'm genuinely asking because, like, I don't enjoy it. If by any means am I right. like, yes, I'm putting my laundry away. But that's the, the whole laundry is done when you've put the laundry away, not when you folded it. People think laundry means putting it in the washer, changing it into the dryer, folding it, and done. No. The last part to a laundry task is to put that away and hanging. I think that's the other thing is to put it away. You've got like 18 different drawers, sometimes in yeah. different locations in the house. And then, you know, then you have to hang some of the clothes. Well, Tate's problem this I week actually hanging. was he was putting his laundry away and all of his hangers were missing. I had some clothes that I had ordered and I didn't have hangers. So I took his and hung my clothes up with them. And he's like, I have no room on my pants. <laughs> Deal with it. Go buy some new hangers. I was like, okay, I'll get, I'll get more hangers. But my advice would be, you don't put it away, Allie. 
don't put it away for him because that's just not going to then he'll just figure oh I'll never have to put my laundry away yeah but you got it you got to softly encourage are you gonna put your laundry away oh, say I I'm glad you're saying softly because I would Allie what I would do is just outright say you have to do this you if you are the last person out of the bed make the bed every day and and you know you don't do that in your own life. I don't because I don't really care all that much do as I say not as I do no, I don't really care all that much I'm like I really don't care coming home to an unmade bed it doesn't really affect me all that much um I do like to do it myself like that's how I like to start my day if I could um also quick do you have the same hangers or do you have like differing hangers like for different clothes or Tate and I have different Just like, hangers. you know how there's some hangers that are plastic, some that are felt, some I don't that like the felt ones. <gasps> I love felt. Hangers. I don't like felt. They're too sticky. And like when I just want to grab a shirt, it like takes like forever to take it off. Oh, like, I love, it makes your, your clothes, you don't have those like shoulder bumps. I do not like, I have like one felt hanger that I have a nice dress on. Other than that, I use all, all plastic ones. And then do you give Tate the bad hangers? Because I give Eugene all the bad hangers, and then he gets so what irritated. What constitutes a bad hanger? Like a like dry cleaning hanger? Dry cleaning hangers. <laughs> um, so sad. Some of the ones that you got from the store yeah. that the clothes came yeah. on. It has, like, the size on the yeah. top. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would be lying if I said Tate didn't have a lot of those hangers, but I use them too. I'm not, I'm not a hanger snob. Like I don't really oh, care. You didn't get so annoyed because you're I, a I hanger just, snob. I, felt I'm, ones are bougie. I love felt hangers. If 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 I could afford them, I would buy more. Yeah. but like after a while, you know, it's it's. I'll just keep using the the ones that we have. So yeah. I don't I don't have only felt. I have like a mix. Right. Um, but. Most of the time when it comes to folding laundry and putting it away, I give myself the nice, nice hangers. Yes, of so course. By the You're end. You're doing I... the work. It's, your, it's yeah. your reward. Exactly. And then one last piece of advice, Allie. Maybe if he's not putting his laundry away, put it on his side of the bed. Because then what's he going to do? Get into yeah. bed and knock it all off? And he's then you're going to be forced to put it away. That's like two birds, one stone right there. Yeah. You know? And then you're, you're, you're saying make your bed. And put and your laundry away. Put your laundry away. And yeah. you know what? It'll make us happier. It'll make us... Uh, happy uh, wife, happy life. Yeah. Oh, this... Although it's this, a fiancé. It's a fiancé, so they're not married yet. This goes right into happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Poor Sam. Sam from Springfield says, my wife tells me I need to lose weight and her comments are hurtful. Oh. Sam. Sam. That stinks for you. I, just I think have to say though, when I told this to Monica initially, she goes, "Oh boy, is that Eugene?" <laughs> this is Eugene. Eugene Sam Tips at PHL seventeen, remaining totally anonymous. Um, so this is one of those things where I'm like, remember when we talked about the snoring, and yeah. I was like, you know, as for a health issue, it needs to be brought up. Yes. So. You know, your your wife or fiance asking you to lose weight, that's not really nice. And if she's doing it in a hurtful way, that's that's not nice. Name calling. Yeah, or just like you feel really bad about yeah, it. Yeah. But but there is something to be said for saying, Hey, it's it should never be you need to. It should be we need to. Let's we need to start living a healthier life. We need to start working out more. We need to start buying healthier, more, um, uh, you know, less processed foods or whatever you think. I totally agree. I think it's a, a team effort. Yeah, this, always. Like, whoever's cooking is making the healthier foods. And, yeah. you know, if you want your significant other to lose weight for their health, I think that's always important, like, yeah. you know, to keep it healthy, as you mentioned. So if you are doing the cooking, then, you know, you make really healthy dishes. Yeah. You don't keep temptation around the house, whether that be various desserts or whatever it may yeah, be. Yeah, that, that would be. Um, but I helpful. think it's definitely like, I I'm hoping that this is coming from, I want you to live a long time and I care about your health. Like I know personally, when I first met Tate, he loved McDonald's, mm -hmm. loved it, ate it like every weekend, it is all the delish. time. He hasn't had McDonald's wow. in a very That's long amazing. time. And now he makes the bed and doesn't eat McDonald's. I don't know how she trains him like this. No. If, if Just you could share with the rest I of the world. I worded it nicely of, you know, yes. I want you to be here a long time. It's so very stop true. stop eating the crap. And, but again, but you already don't eat the crap. But 
I really think it helps when it's not about one person and what they're not doing or what they are doing. It's you two as a team. What can you do to make the situation better? And something like this, where everyone can, there's always room for improvement for everyone. Even G- the Jenna Meisner has room for some healthy improvement. Stop eating tasty cake, apple baked pies. You know, but that's what it should so, be. It should never be you, you, you. It's always what can we do so that our lives together are healthier. Yeah, and maybe Sam's that's a wife shame, just Sam. like, you know, I don't. I would be curious to have an example of a comment. Yeah. Is it like you're fat, or is it like, or like I, I want you to lose weight? Because yeah. then in that case, yeah, it's still not nice of them to say, and it's still only isolating you. But I want you to lose weight. That could just be, I, I want you to be healthy. I want you to be around for a while. Yep. All right. Um, so my topic is shampoo use. That's all it says. Shampoo. Shamp- okay, and I'm Eugene. reading on the screen. Eugene is stealing Monica's shampoo. There it is. But uh, we do talk about his luscious locks on this <laughs> He's got podcast. nice hair. But so as you know, um, I wash my hair twice a week. Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday and Sunday. It's good for my hair to not wash it. So I have the shampoo that I use that's expensive because I reason I don't I don't use, use it, it that all much. that much. Felt hangers, expensive <laughs> shampoo. shampoo. These are things you I'm need. using I'm using the bougie stuff, the redkin stuff. Oh, okay. So you're keeping God, that, that stuff color. That's so ridiculous. I don't use that and it's, I color my hair. I 35 for shampoo, 35 for conditioner. 70 so, bucks. Yeah, ridiculous. Is that not ridiculous? But it really does work. I think it works amazing. Okay. Um, Eugene, I saw the other day, he ran out of his shampoo. So he just starts What's, using. What does he use? He uses like men's Axe 18 yeah. in 1 shampoo, yes. body, hair, nails. Anything you need. Any Solve organ. your problems with this <laughs> bottle of shampoo. I'm like, that's disgusting. You should not be using something that's like soft. Body wash, yeah. face wash. Yes. So you can condition your hair. Yeah. It's so okay. ridiculous. I but, think that's a common theme among, among men, but continue. So then he just starts using my shampoo. Not the mm. red kid. The, he uses red. He's been using okay. red kid. First of all, it makes me, it though, uneven. In his defense, I'm sure he has no idea the, the price of red kid. I'll be honest. I just noticed this today, this morning. I, walk, I went into the shower and I saw my shampoo bottle, but not my conditioner bottle. And he had used it and it has significantly less shampoo in it now. And oh, it's Where's so, the conditioner bottle? He doesn't use the conditioner. He only uses oh, shampoo. So That's, you, it's uneven now and it's expensive. So you evenly put dollops when you wash your hair? So yes, you know? I, I keep it even. Okay, that is strange in itself. <laughs> I have to say, in Eugene's defense, I don't think he understands how much the shampoo right. is. I'm sure he was in the shower and he said, I'm out and just grabbed it. Yeah. And was like, probably like, oh, this smells so good. My hair feels amazing. Have you told him? I have not. But then I don't want to really be like, listen, my stuff's yeah, expensive. Don't, use, don't use it because you're not worth it. And it's like your husband. It's not like this yeah. is mine. This is yours. Right. But like. That's tough. I mean, I don't have bougie I, shampoo, so if yeah. Kate was to use it, I would not care. But I, it changes it if it's the fancy stuff. Yeah, so I, I just need to tell him. I just wanted you to know that I was like, oh, my gosh. He's no. using my shampoo. Don't use my shampoo. Yeah, I, I could definitely feel that way. But you, you need to tell him, you know, this is $70. You you just used a $35 shampoo. I don't even think you're using it and understanding its worth. Yeah. You need to. Probably got it all over the ground. Yeah, he was like, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. Uh, and, then he, and then he went and <laughs> washed his chest with it. Because that's what men do. They, they put it in their hair and then they wash their chest. I'm like, this is. This is too many body parts you're washing with one item, yeah. buddy. It's so Tate and I use completely separate products. Oh so my God. and he gets Men. like the gallon of the uh two in one shampoo conditioner. Yeah. So he's never out. Eugene's he's three in one. Out. It's body, hair, and conditioner. That is that's not right. Um not right at all. So I, I will I will have to tell him um that he he should Stop not be using, using the yeah. expensive shampoo. Okay, you can submit your problems. We always appreciate them. We love them. Monica PHL seventeen, Jenna PHL seventeen, or Jenna Meisner TV on Instagram. We always have that little question box where you can submit them. That's my favorite way. I know it's great. We always have some really fun one, really interesting ones. Uh, catch us on Spotify. Those those pop up sporadically. And we're coming to YouTube. And we're coming to YouTube. Stand by for that. I, we don't know all the details. <laughs> I don't know if you were allowed to tell people that yet. Oh, Eugene's calling me. Oh, no. <laughs> he heard about the 
shampoo. He's calling to say, stop talking about me. Thanks so much for joining us on this Thursday morning. You've been served. We'll see you next week. Ha, ha, ha.